Okay, in this video, I'm going to teach you about the introduction to section 2.2, which is focus on linear functions. So in our previous section, uh, we learned that a linear function has a constant average rate of change. So right in here should be the word constant. Therefore, for a linear function, the rate of change and the average rate of change are the same. Furthermore, we saw that the rate of change for a linear function is equivalent to the slope of the line when it's graphed. Okay, so if I tell you that here's an equation of a line and I ask you what the rate of change is or what the average rate of change is, it's going to be 7 because 7 is the slope and 7 is also the rate of change. Okay, let's start knocking off some of these questions. So these are true or false questions. If we can draw the graph of a line, we can define its equation. That's true. So if you uh, know, for example, that a graph looks like this, so let's say that this is... 2 right here, so that's 2, and then I know that that's one point, and then I'm going to go up one and over one, and that's a second point. If this is my line, I therefore know that the equation is going to be y equals 2 plus 1x. So if I can do the drawing, I can get the equation. If we are given two points on a linear function, we can draw or graph the line. That's true, because you're going to find the slope, and then you're going to use the points to find the b in conjunction with the slope, and then you have your line. Okay, so this so far this has been true, this is true. If we are given two points on a linear function, we can compute the slope of a line, and that's true also, because what does slope equal? Slope equals change in y, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so let's keep going. And this says, if we are given one point, and the slope of a line, we can graph the line. And that's also true. Because if you know that I have y equals, well, let me just, let's do it this way. Let me back up for a sec. And what if I say that the slope is 2 and a point is 0, 3? Well, that point happens to be the y-intercept. So you could go to the y-intercept, and to do that, you would go to 3, 1, 2, 3. That's your first point right there. And then you would go up 2, 1, 2, over 1, get your second point, and you've got the line. So if you have a point and a slope, you can get the line. If we are given the x-intercept and the y-intercept of a line, we can graph the line. That is true, and this is why. Let me, I'm going to change colors again. So let me make, this is true, and if you graph the line by intercepts, here is your x-intercept, for example, here is your y-intercept, for example, connect the two, you've got a line. Okay, next question. Slope-intercept form is the most common method to write the equation of a line. That has been true so far. That form is y equals mx plus b. Here's your slope. Here's your intercept. Okay, one more. The location of the x-intercept and the y-intercept of a linear function are, are written as single points. That's true. So you can say... Let's say the x-intercept is 2, comma, 0, and the y-intercept is 0, comma, 4. Okay, so there are two single points, 
and those are the intercepts. The y-coordinate of the y-intercepts corresponds to the value of the linear function when the x is 0. That is true. So let's write that out. So this is true. So if I have this graph, okay, so let's see if I make this graph, and the y-intercept, which is right up here, that is the point where the x is 0, so that's correct. Likewise, the x-coordinate of the x-intercept of the linear function is the value of the x when the y is 0. Also true, there's the point where your y is 0, and that's called the root of the function. Okay, so this page is done. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, here's another question for us. A vertical line has an undefined slope. Okay, that's true. So here's a vertical line. So it looks like this line right here. And since slope is change in y over change in x, since your change in x is 0, this is undefined, and that is true. Okay, reading, reading the next one, it says, a horizontal slope, excuse me, a horizontal line has a slope of zero. Also true. So look, if this is my, whoops, let me just get this. If this is my horizontal line, and I'll make that line brown, here it is. What is slope? Slope equals change in y over change in x. And I can see if I pick two points, the change in y is 0 over some number. That's 0, and therefore the slope is 0. Okay, moving on to the next one. A line with a positive slope moves upward as we head from left to right on the x-axis. Okay, here's your positive slope. It's going to move upwards as we head left to right, so that's true. And this one says, a line with a negative slope moves downward. This is a negative slope. That is also true. And then we get to the rate of change of a linear function is equivalent to the value of m from the standard slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. And that is true. So slope equals the rate of change. Okay, and the last question. For a line written in a standard slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, the point 0b is the point on the line. And that's correct. This point is the y-intercept. And that happens where your x is 0, and that's why this is 0. Okay, so that's also a true statement. So all those statements were true. Okay, then we come to this definition. The initial value of a linear function is the value the function takes on when x is 0. If working in the standard slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, the initial value corresponds to b. Okay, so this is worth... Um, thinking about for another second. So if we know, for example, if I have a line that is y equals um, 5 plus 2x, okay? So this is my b. This is my initial value because here x is 0. So if you're going to graph that line, so let's just say that I have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, and I'll go another couple here. So here's 5. Here is my initial value right there. Okay, right there is my initial value. I start there. I can graph this line by from the initial value going up 2 and over 1 which gives me this point right here. I can then connect those two points 
and I have my line. Okay, so the new term that we had is initial value, and that's another term for identifying the y-intercept or the b in the form y equals mx plus b. So think about that, and we'll move on to the next page. Okay, so this is an important page because they compare and contrast three of the four forms of a line. So I say three of them because uh, we learned, if you look at the textbook, that there was another form of a line, and I'm just going to write this up here, and it's called the general form. We don't tend to use this form, but since the book sometimes refers to it, I want to have you be familiar with it. Okay, that's the general form. So here, right here, is your slope-intercept form. Here's your slope. Here is your intercept. We also just realize that the intercept can be called the initial value. Okay, in order to graph this, I'm going to my initial value, or my y-intercept, of negative 1. And that's going to happen right here. Then I'm looking at my slope. I'm going to go up 2. So 1, 2, and over 3. 1, 2, 3. That's another point. Connect those two points, and you have the equation of the line. All right? So that's how that, that goes. Remember your slope, my two-thirds, is rise over run. And when everything's positive, you rise up and then run over to the right. If it's negative, I'm going to rise down and then run over to the right. And we'll practice the neg neg negative one pretty soon. Okay, so the next form of a line that you should be familiar with is this AX plus BY equals C form. So it's this form right here. Okay, X and Y are on the same side. That is key. That's what makes that form standard form. And it's preferred that A and B are integers. Okay, you usually don't see them as fractions. So if you want to graph using this form, you find your intercepts. So the first thing you're going to do is find your x-intercept. Um, you do that by setting y equals to 0. And if y is 0, then 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 halves. Okay, so that's 1 and a half. So that's about right there. Okay, so then let's say I want to find my y-intercept. I do that by setting my x to 0. So if 2x is 0, then minus 3y equals 3. Minus 3y equals 3. Because what I did was I set x equal to 0. Divide by negative 3. And y is going to be equal to negative 1. Here's my second point. That's my second intercept. Connect the points, and you have your line. So the gift that standard form gives you is you can use the intercepts. Okay, that's your gift. The gift that slope-intercept form gives you is you can use your slope and your intercept. Okay, point-slope is a fabulous form of a line. And point slope is usually not used before you get to pre-calc and calculus. Once you get to calculus, it's used all the time because it's the easiest, by far, form of a line. So look at the format. This is your format. So if you have a point, and the point is an x, y, and the slope, you're good to go. So graphing using a point and the slope. So what's that point? Well, it's y minus y1. So y1 must have been 
negative 3. Okay, so y1 must have been negative 3. And this is x minus x1. So x1 must have also been negative 3. That's my point. Let's find it. 1, 2, 3. That's negative 3. And 1, 2, 3. Here's my point right here. Now let's use our slope. Go up 2, 1, 2, over 3. 1, 2, 3. There you have it. Okay, and you can see that all three of these lines are actually the exact same line, but presented in three different forms. Okay, you want to embrace point slope because it is by far the easiest form to use and it comes in very handy and eliminates a lot of math errors. So you want to memorize this form and see if you can use it. Okay, so let's go on to the next page. Okay, so on this page it says to move from slope intercept form to standard form, move the constant term to the other side and put x and y on the same side. And then to move from standard to slope intercept form, simply solve for y. Okay, so let's tackle this one at a time. So if I have slope intercept form, so slope intercept form would be, for example, y equals 7x plus 2. You want to change it to standard form, and standard form, by the way, so let's write this down for ourselves, is when you have both variables on one side. So they're saying move the constant term to the other side and put x and y on the same side. Okay, so let's change the form. So move the constant to the other side. So let me make move that over. It's going to become a negative 2 equals, and now I'm going to move my y also, and that is standard form. Okay? So then they say to move from standard to slope intercept form. So here's my standard form. Negative 2 equals 7x minus 1. Simply solve for y. To solve for y, I want to get it alone. So move your y and move your negative 2. y equals 7x plus 2, and we are back. Okay, so you want to practice doing that because it should be a seamless operation. Okay, then they go on and talk about parallel lines, which does come up quite often. Parallel lines are like railroad tracks, and they have the same slopes. So if you know the slope of one line, you know the slope of all the lines parallel to it. Okay, the slopes of perpendicular lines are also related, but they're related in a different way. They are related as negative reciprocals of one another. So if your slope is two-thirds, the slope of the line perpendicular to that is going to be the negative reciprocal. All right, so let's give an example of parallel lines. So parallel lines could be lines are, that are like um, y equals 7x plus 2 and y equals 7x plus minus 4. Notice what they have in common. They have the same slope. Okay, perpendicular lines don't have the same slope. So let's say if we had one line, that would be y equals, I don't know, let's say um, 6 fifths 
x plus 2. Okay, the line that's perpendicular to that one is going to have a negative reciprocal slope. So negative, and then flip that guy over, reciprocal slope, and let's just make up a y-intercept. So notice that these slopes are negative reciprocals. Okay? All right, let's think about that, and we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, so these are kind of fun to do. Um, in words, they say the linear function g of x has a rate of change of negative 7 and an initial value of 1. So we know if we're going to put it into slope-intercept form, for example... The rate of change is your slope, so y equals negative, negative 7x, and then the initial value is your b. Okay, so we could graph it with a table. So remember, you always start with x's and you generate y's. So if x is 0, y is 1. If x is, let's say, 2, uh, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, so that's going to be 13. Um, I could have used 1, 2, negative 7 plus 1, that's going to be negative 6, and this is going to be ne sorry, negative 13, right? Because 2 times 7, negative 14 plus 1, yes. So those are some table values, but I'm going to graph it using my equation. So if I can fit this, let's see, this is 1, that's my um, initial point, and then this is, so I'm going to go down 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and over 1. So remember, if it's negative, I go down. Instead of rise over run, it's fall over run, and I always run to the right. So connect these two points. And you are good to go. And notice that this second point right here is actually the point that I've graphed on this graph. So connect these in a straight line. And that is your graph. Okay, so we talked about doing it in words, getting an equation, using a table, and then doing the graph. So let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so here they've given us only... A table but it's just the start of a table so what I would do is I would say oh thank you very much look what this is this is the y-intercept so let's go ahead and we'll plot that so zero negative one it's right there that's my y-intercept what I would do is I would get the slope the slope is change in y over change in X so let's look so I'm going to have 5 minus 2 over negative 2 minus a negative 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So that means my slope is negative 3. So what I could do now is I can put this into words. So let's look at the words that we had before so we can kind of mimic them. So it says the linear function, so we'll say the linear function, and we'll call this f of x, has a rate of change of what? Remember that's the slope of negative 3 and an initial value of what? Negative 1. Okay, so what's my equation? So my equation should be 
y equals negative 1 minus 3x. So let's use this to graph this. So here's my negative 1. I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. That's my next point, and I'm going to draw my line. Now they want me to fill the table in some more, and I'm going to use the equation to do it. If my x is 1, then I have negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. If my x is 2, then I have negative 1 minus 6, which is a negative 7. So I have filled in the table by using my equation. Okay, so you should be able to, to figure out all four features right here. Now, we, ha we have another section here um, called Finding Equations of Lines. This is very important because this is usually where most of my students have the biggest problems. So let's look at that on the next page. Okay, so look at this first problem. It says, find the equation of a line that has a slope of 3 and passes through the point negative 3, negative 7. Okay, I'm going to use point-slope form for that because look, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That is point slope. I told you I want you to memorize this. That is the easiest form of a line to use when given a point and a slope. So let's set it up. What's my slope? 3. My point, the x value is a negative 3, so it's going to be x minus a negative 3, which is x plus 3. The y value is a negative 7, so it's going to be y minus a minus 7, which makes it y plus 7, and you are done. So this is far and away the easiest form of a line, so I really want you to get comfortable with it. Okay, let's move on to the next one, and you can stop the video at any point and go back over these concepts. Find the equation of a line that's parallel to the line y, x plus y equals 2 and passes through this point. Okay, so let's find the slope. I'm going to write this x plus y equals 2 in slope intercept form. So that's going to be x minus 2. Well, let me not do that because that I'll have to do a couple more things. So let's do this y equals 2 minus x. That's a good form because that reveals that my slope is negative 1. Okay, so now I have a slope and I have a point. So I want to use point-slope form. So I'm going to write the point-slope form here so I can follow it exactly so just that so you can get more and more comfortable with it. Okay, the slope I discovered of the parallel line is negative 1 x minus a minus 2 makes this plus 2. y minus a 5 makes that y minus 5, and we are done. So again, once you get a point and a slope, please, please, please just go ahead and use point-slope form. Okay, question number 3 says find the equation of a line that passes through the point negative 1, 1, and is perpendicular to the line through negative 1, 1, and 2, comma 2. Okay, so you need to figure out the slope of the line that passes through those two points. To figure out slope, I'm going to say change in y over change in x. So, <clears throat> 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 minus a minus 1 is 3. So that's the slope. I want the perpendicular slope. So I'm going to take this slope and do the negative reciprocal, which is negative 3. I now have the slope I need, and I have a point. Once again, point-slope form is going to be the ticket to my quick answer and hopefully my success on this problem. All right, so my slope 
is a negative 3. And this is going to be x minus a minus 1. So that's x plus 1. And this is y minus a 1. So this is just y minus 1. And we are done. So we have our equations. So we have a couple of more to do. So let's go on to the next page. Okay, so now I'm set up. Find the equation of a line that passes through this point and is perpendicular to y equals 4. So let's think about this. If I have a line that is y equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is it. This is y equals 4. And then it has to pass through the point 2, 2. So this is 1, 2, 1, 2. It has to pass through that point. So isn't it going to be this line right here? That's perpendicular, right? Well, I should put the box up here. Perpendicular up there. So that's going to be my line. What is that line? Well, that is just the line x equals 2. So you're not doing a y equals mx plus b or even a um, point slope form, you are going to find an x equals form because the line is perpendicular to a y equals. And this slope, by the way, is undefined because if x is 2 and that looks like that, then change in y over change in x. y is changing. Okay, so let's think about this. So if that is going to be my situation, then my x is never changing. So this is 0. My y does change. The second I have a 0 in the denominator, my function is undefined. Okay, so that is a vertical line, and that line is x equals 2. So you may have to think about this for a little bit. And there's one more problem, and this problem I really like because I've taught calculus for many years. And a secant line is a line that hits a curve in more than one spot. So it's hitting it here and here. That's called a secant line. Okay, so here's the parabola. This parabola is y equals negative x squared minus 4x. A secant line to that graph is also shown and passes through the points. Okay, so this is the point negative 3, 3 and 1, negative 5. Give the line that is parallel to the secant line shown but passes through the point negative 1, 3. Okay, I think they want me to give the line that is parallel. Okay, so it has to pass through the point negative 1, 3. So that's good to know. So I'm going to just keep account of that. My point has to pass through negative 1, 3. But what is my slope? Well, the slope of the secant line can be determined by saying change in y over change in x. So that's going to be 3 minus a minus 5 over negative 3 minus 1. Okay, so 3 minus a minus 5 is 3 plus 5, which is 8. And negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. So that means that my slope of the secant line is negative 2, and the slope that's parallel to it is also negative 2. Okay, so now that I know those two things, let's write it in point-slope form because that is my favorite form of a line. That form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so y minus, where's y1? y1 is 3. 
So y minus 3 equals, the slope is negative 2, x minus a minus 1 is x plus 1, and we are done. Okay, so you may want to go through these notes again, or at least go over the parts of the notes that you thought might be a little confusing.